In this video, I want to show you how to set up the new Unity input system and how to use it in an existing project. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. Here I have a 2D platformer game that we are going to be migrating from the standard input system to the new input system. We can move, jump and attack. If you want to learn how to create it, the link to the video course will be in the description. Here we are in Unity Editor and to start working with our new input system we need to go to the top menu, Window, Package Manager. A new window should pop up so I'm going to dock it here and what we need to do is set in the top left corner Unity Registry from the list and here we are going to type Input. And you should see an input system package that is downloadable. So in the Package Manager click Install to install it and after completing this it will pop a warning that this project is using the new input system package but the native uh, platform uh, backends are set so you need to restart your Unity to start using the new input system. So just click yes. Unity will be restarted and now you should be using the new input system. Now to check it you need to go to the top menu, click edit and select project settings. Again, another new window should pop up, so I'll dock it here. I will close this package manager because we do not need it. And in the project settings, select on the left the player settings. And if you slide down, you should have this uh, tab called other settings. And one of those should be active input handling in the configuration. And if you select it, you have the option to set the input manager old, input system package new and both. Since reading from both will create some overhead, you want to select one of those that you want to use. Now we can close those settings. And now, since my project is using the old input system, if I try pressing play, it will throw me some errors that I cannot really use the old input system. You are trying to read input using the old input system. So we need to fix it. In our project settings, it's best to right click and create a new folder. Let's call this folder input, or I like to call mine underscore input. If I know that, I will be often entering those folders. So I will open this folder, and now if you right click here, select create menu, and slide at the bottom, you should see those input actions. That's what you want to create. Now Unity is trying to make everything into an asset instead of a class. So this new controls, let's call it a uh, player input control uh, config maybe. This will be an asset that exists in our project section. And this is not a class, we cannot directly use it. But if we double tap on it, another new window should pop up. I will dock it here and we should see the configuration menu for our new input system. Now I have mentioned that this is an asset because when we press play we can still edit it and all the changes will be applied to this asset. This is not bound to the play mode where you uh, previously if you have a script when you change something in the play mode it will not be saved when you stop playing the game. So this is the benefit of using those assets and scriptable objects. Anyways Let's select our player input config. I can right click on this tab, maximize it so that we can preview what is going on here. So first you will see those three big tabs. On the left side you should have those action maps. And this is where you define a specific movement type. Basically you define the states of your game like the default state would be probably where you move your character and menu state might be something like when you are selecting uh, the buttons in your menu, pause menu or main menu or you can have something like controls for the inventory which blocks your player from moving around when you are in the inventory. So this is what are the action maps. They allow us to prevent some input from affecting our game like we want to stop our movement input from affecting our game when we view our inventory. Now next in the center you have those actions and those actions are basically the logic what you have in your game so an action would be a movement or jump so those are the game mechanics or abstract concepts that you have in your game that you want to tie 
two specific keys on your keyboard or on your gamepad or on whatever device that you want to use for the input and lastly on the right we have the properties which allows us to fine tune how our input will affect our actions so here we are going to basically tweak our inputs and at the top of our tab just below the name you have those no controls schemes now those schemes if you open it up they allow you to add a control scheme which basically allows you to divide the different types of controllers so i will call my first controller keyboard and i can now define in the list is empty i can click plus icon and i can say that i require this control scheme to uh, only work when there is a keyboard connected and i can create another one let me add control scheme because i have a gamepad so i'll call the gamepad and i can request that my list is empty i need to have a gamepad and you can select the generate gamepad and this is also required now why do we do this well we are going to soon find out that we can assign specific controls to specific uh, input devices and we can split it so that when you want to modify this you can only display the keyboard settings so we can select a gamepad and only preview the setup for your gamepad so it is much easier to uh, tweak those settings later on for now let's select all control schemes basically it is just another layer of abstraction because the whole concept of the new input system is to abstract the device that we use for our input from the actions that are performed when we uh, use our input device so let's get started first i want to create an action map on the left so i'll click this plus icon and a new field will be created i will call this player movement okay so basically this is the default state of my player where the player is moving jumping and attacking i can add another one of those and call it menu and this will mean that we are in the menu screen so i do not want my character to be moving so i do not want to register the movement uh, using our arrow keys on a keyboard or a d-pad on the gamepad i just want to register enter and exit using the start or escape button now this is a lot of planning up front but we do not need to now worry about disabling the player movement when we are in the menu even though our game is playing in the background because not always do we want to freeze the time when we are in the menu or in the inventory screen we want to just prevent our input for our movement input to affect our player when we are in the menu or in the inventory so that's the concept behind those action maps let me select our player movement and as the action i have this new action created if i select it you will see that the property changes if i select the binding and the new action basically the action is the game mechanic or the function that my input should invoke so for my first action i know that my character needs to be jumping so let's call it jumping and this is the action jumping and in the properties we can select the action type so do we want to, uh, it to act as a button so pressing a button causes a jump or do we want to capture a value so how hard we have pressed our spacebar or for the controller this could be one of the triggers so those are the settings that abstract the input device from uh, the functionality and i want this to be button and for the binding in the properties i can select what is called a path as well as a control scheme so for example i can select our path click on this list and here i can type the name for example spacebar or i can select a keyboard and find a key depending on uh, what i want to use so here i'm going to type spacebar okay and i have uh, i can see space uh, keyboard and i will check the keyboard scheme that it will belong to so now if i select uh, my controls and gamepad i will not see any action assigned here so this makes it much easier for me to modify only the actions assigned to the keyboard if i select the specific scheme i will select all control schemes because now i want to add for my jumping also my controller uh, button so i will click on this jumping plus icon and i can see many options here i want to simply add a binding and this will be the next key that i can press to invoke this jumping mechanic i will select the snow binding and i will select the path 
and another way to do this is click this listen and I have my gamepad connected so I want to select a key on the controller on this will be button south so the lower button on the right side of your gamepad and I can now select which one I want I want to use the button south assignment and here I want to assign this to the gamepad scheme so I can preview it for the, when viewing the controls only assigned to the gamepad now what about the movement let's add another action and this will create us a generic action so let's call it a movement okay so now I want to select this movement and I want to select the action type to be value because my movement wants to read the value for two axes horizontal and vertical previously we had this input dot get axis now we can select the action type and we have this value and control type we can have button but what i want to select is a vector 2 since i want to return two values for the x-axis and for the y-axis and now if we select this binding there is no way for us to assign our arrow keys for our keyword so what we can do is first i will assign my gamepad so I can select no binding, select path, I can click listen to, and I'll click one of the buttons on my D-pad. So I can, as you can see, I have this D-pad gamepad and uh, a D-pad Xbox controller. So I'll select the D-pad for the generic gamepad, and this will automatically send the information about the both axes to this uh, value of the movement action. And I can also add here, and I can now see different selection, Add binding will add a specific one binding for controller, for example. So I can add another binding and select path and use the left stick to also be able to control my agent. But I can also add this add to the vector composite, which will allow me to assign arrow keys or WASD values here. And again, I can do here select the up, uh, no binding, and I can select path and listen to, and I can press W key. Or if, you do, it, if it doesn't work, if you are listening to your keyboard, usually what helps is restarting the Unity. But instead of this, I will simply add a W and I will see this W for the keyboard and I can assign the down value to be S value and as keyboard, I can select left and I will simply type here A key and right, this will be for me the D key. Okay, and I can create the same thing for my arrow keys. So again, add this and I, I can call it arrow keys. And I can assign here the keys. Again, if listening doesn't work, make sure that you uh, restart your Unity. I'll type arrow and I can see arrow up and I can assign arrow down. I will need also arrow left, okay? and arrow right okay and this is it i can also rename this vector right click here and rename to be wasd and this is it i can also select those all those and assign them only to be the uh, keyboard related uh, inputs and this is one downside of the system that you need to do a lot of preset to actually start using it of course it will later pay up because we are uh, having this abstracted version of our input controls so we can easily modify them and uh, the only thing that our script will care is those names of those actions and the names of the action maps not about the specific keys pressed when we want to get this input now we wouldn't have to do this if we didn't have a lot of keys for a simple prototype we can actually access uh, directly from our new input system so if you go to the documentation, the link will be in the description. You can simply ask var gamepad equals gamepad.current if you are using Unity Engine.input system and you can simply read gamepad right trigger was pressed this frame and you can get this input right away without this whole long setup of the uh, asset for the input actions. But again, at some point, it will miss the point of this abstraction part where you will easily can add new inputs for your a game uh, because this will be very rigid approach okay back to our setup let's add one more and this will be menu or it can be open menu so basically i want to have a way to open a menu in the game and pause the game 
so that I can restart the game or uh, exit the game. So basically I want to add new bindings here and let me select escape as the keyboard binding and I will add another one and this will be for my gamepad. I will select listen and press start on my gamepad and I will select the gamepad scheme for this. And what we can do now is add the same thing to our menu. So let's select our open menu, right click and let's uh, copy it and let's select our menu action map. And here basically I want to go to this map when I am in the menu. I do not want to listen to the jump or movement logic. If I do not want to stop our my game so I do not want to pause it. I just want to paste my open menu and let's double tap on it and let's call it close or exit menu. And I want to delete this new action that was created by default. So basically the same keys will now only be captured by my input system if I enable the menu action map and disable the player movement map. So this gives us a lot of control over what inputs are we listening to. So we do not need to worry about stopping to listen to those uh, inputs when we go into our menu. We can do this from the level of our new input system. We can simply swap the action map. And now if we swap it to the menu, we are only going to be listening to those exit menu keys. And when we click one of those, we are going to go back to our game and then re-enable our player movement uh, action map. So again, there is a lot to this new system, but it also requires a lot of preset at the start. So with this done, we have at the top a save asset button, but what we may want to do from now on is to select this auto save on the left. So now our uh, action map will always be saved when we make some changes to it so that we do not need to worry about saving those manually. I right click on this and unmaximize it if you have maximized it. Now the quickest way to start using those is to select for example your player, add a component called player input and this component comes with the new input system. You can assign here the actions. If you click on this you can assign player input config so what we have just created and we can see that we have some options. The default scheme, our keyboard or our gamepad or any actually we do not need to select it by our but our default map is the player movement map this is important because our new input system needs to enable one of those default maps and now we can select behavior and behavior is currently send message i like to use invoke unity events and now let me minimize the rest of those components here and i'm going to expand the events player movement and as you can see, those are all the, def uh, the actions we have defined. And uh, for the menu, we have also the exit menu. And uh, basically, this is it for what we have defined here. But the issue is that in our events, we are passing callback context. So this is not the value of true or false or no value. We need to parse this callback context to start using this. So that's why I do not really like this player input script because uh, anyways we need to create our own script that will parse those events. So instead of using this, what we can do is remove it and create our own script that will handle our player input. And to do this we need to first select our actions and select uh, in the inspector generate C sharp class. If we select this and apply, a new C sharp class config will be generated with a lot of setup here prepared for us. Now since setting up our own script or actually setting up the changes to my existing scripts which I would like to avoid for the player input default component will require some time. Again, we had spent a lot of time configuring our player input system to accept only the keys that we want to accept. So I will split this video into two and in the next one we are going to create our script. See you in the next video.